Am I the asshole for refusing to let my daughter invite her biological dad to her birthday and threatening to cancel it? Disclaimer, this is not my story. I'm a mother of a 16-year-old, soon 17-year-old daughter, Kelly. Her biological dad left when she was four years old. It's complicated, but despite him being away, he still sent money or had his family help from time to time. I still struggled a lot raising her until I met my now husband, Christopher. Christopher is like a dad to Kelly. He's the only father figure she had. However, I found out that she's reconnected with her biological dad through his family, which I wasn't happy about, but I didn't make a fuss about it. Then she started mentioning him often, going to visit him while canceling plans to hang out with us and more. Her justification is that her dad is sick and might be terminal. She sees him at his friend's house where he's staying now. Christopher and I were planning her 17th birthday party at our house. Kelly told me that she'd like to have her biological dad come over to celebrate since he may not be able to be around next year. Christopher said no immediately. He said he won't let that man come into our house, which made Kelly cry, saying that we're robbing her of her last chance to make memories with her dad after finally finding him again. I told her that I don't feel comfortable having him come to the house and being in the same room as him. Her stepsister said that both me and Christopher are overreacting and that Kelly wants her dad to take part in her birthday so badly. Christopher left the house and I snapped at Kelly and threatened to cancel the whole thing. Later when we calmed down, I suggested she goes to celebrate with him, but she said her friends and their parents won't be able to attend. She also said he can't throw her a party since he's sick. We had another argument and she started ignoring me and Christopher while staying in her room. She said she won't be able to forgive me if I let her dad miss what could be her last birthday with him. I'm not sure if I'm being unreasonable or she is. So am I the asshole? Am I wrong for not letting my fiancé's niece try on my engagement ring? I, 36 female, recently got engaged to my fiancé, 34 male. He's in the military and has an extended family. He's close to his sister and 21-year-old niece. His brother-in-law is deceased. When I met his niece, she seemed sweet but kept making passive-aggressive comments about me, like how I look older than my fiancé, how we're incompatible just due to our star signs or whatever. And when we announced my engagement, she told my fiancé he's moving too fast. We've been dating for almost three years. What does LDR mean? Oh! Yesterday, I visited my future in-laws and his sister and niece were there. His niece saw my ring and commented on it saying, I bet this is the fanciest one you've ever got, just like my uncle. I felt offended and thought that was rude, but I ignored her because of how my mother-in-law was looking at me. But then his niece asked if she could try the ring on. I was taken aback. I said no. She asked again and I still said no. Next thing I knew, she got up from her seat and stood in front of me, extending her arm, expecting me to take the ring off and give it to her. I was like, what the f***? I said, please go back to your seat. I already said no. My sister-in-law said it was fine, but I said I just didn't feel comfortable. Sister-in-law then looked at me quizzically and said, are you serious? That's his niece. Just let her try it on. I said, I'm sorry, but no. Niece threw a fit and went upstairs. Her mother said I had no reason to act like this and said she didn't get what my problem is. Okay. Buzz. Ugh. Entitled parents, regardless if it's your brother's wife, whatever, I don't care. She said no. You tell your kid, hey, she doesn't want to give it to you. Stop asking for it. Simple as that. Like, it's it's hers. Like, hello. I took my purse about to leave after she kept berating me for not letting her daughter try the ring. Mother-in-law asked me to stay, but I insisted on leaving. My sister-in-law tried calling me, and because I needed time to answer, she sent a text saying my behavior was alarming and that she will bring this incident up to her brother when he gets back because she sent them trying to drive a wedge between her daughter and my fiancé for whatever reason. Oh my god, oh my god. We haven't talked after that, and I really don't know what to think of this. I don't know if I acted poorly, but I'll leave this to you. Maybe I am missing something. So, am I the asshole? There's only one person's engagement ring I've ever tried on, and that was my sister's. Oh, and my mom's. Like, duh. But, like, that's my sister and that's my mom. Like, what is wrong with you? Like, if, I feel like, ugh, no, no. Okay, take that as an answer. Story time about how my best friend and boyfriend slept with each other. So a little background information, I was 16 and in 10th grade. So this whole thing like started two years ago whenever my crush asked me on a date and then blah, 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 we became official. And I decided to introduce him to my best friend, Vivian. And we're gonna call my boyfriend, Louise. So one day we're all in my room watching a movie and I went to go and grab some snacks, but I left the door open because I wanted to see what was happening in the movie. And while I'm in the kitchen, I see Louise staring at Vivian. Like I was low key weirded out because why are you doing that? Anyway, so then I went into the room and I felt this like weird tension between them. So I stopped inviting my best friend to come over whenever we would hang out. And she got super mad at me for this. 
And Vivi and I would always like pull pranks on each other. So the one day I call up her boyfriend, John, and I'm like, oh, we should say that we like each other. So we did and she didn't care, which maybe she just didn't think the prank was funny, but it was sus. So the next day I stop over at Vivian's house and she doesn't answer. Like for part two. Part two about how I caught my boyfriend and my best friend sleeping together. So like I said, I kind of felt bad for this prank. So I went over to her house the next day and I knock on the door and she doesn't answer. So I go around to the back door of her house and nobody was answering. So I look through the window because the cars were there. And that's whenever I see her and my boyfriend doing it. Yup. So obviously I was pissed off and I happened to have my boyfriend's house key. So I went to the Dollar Tree and bought like 50 different nail polishes. And as you could probably guess, I went to his house and put nail polish all over his shit, his clothes, his shoes, everything, even his walls. When I left, I asked John if we could meet and talk and Wednesday we decided to confront them. And Louise and Vivian said that they had been dating secretly behind our backs way before me and louise even started dating there really is no moral to this story to be honest it's just that girls need to start following girl code more and not being fake my 60 male son-in-law 28 male has the opportunity to become a nasa astronaut but my daughter 27 female is holding him back in 2012, my family and my now son-in-law, 17 male, now 28 male, were sitting outside of Dulles International Airport to see the Discovery Space Shuttle fly in. It flew right over us and was one of the coolest experiences I had ever seen. And for everyone else, it was just that. But for my son-in-law, it was clearly something far more than just a cool experience. Fast forward almost 12 years later, and my son-in-law is now a test pilot in the Air Force. He has flown various aircrafts, including the F-16, F-22, and other aircrafts that I don't even know about. He's very young for his position, but he has been very dedicated towards his end goal of being a NASA astronaut. Despite lacking some of the various requirements, his superiors have recommended him to NASA with a lot of positive feedback. He's so close to achieving his dream, with the only problem being my daughter. She is terrified he'll somehow die in either a training accident, flight, or some other obscure way. She has apparently thrown many tantrums over it, throwing things, hitting him, and threatening to leave him and take my grandson away. She is refusing therapy, and my son-in-law has said he is considering to cease further attempts to make it into the astronaut program if it means he stays married. I can't stress how rare of an opportunity this is, not just for him, but anyone. And as for someone who's witnessed his passion manifest, I I want him to go for it and I don't want my daughter to stop him but I also don't want their marriage to fall apart because of it and have my grandson shared between them. My daughter has acted this way before when he has taken his career in a different way as expected but I don't want to advise my son-in-law to continue with his career on a possible bluff just for it to turn out to be real this time. He wants advice and now I need it. I mean he's a test pilot already. What safety is going to be different here? I, I actually I'm pretty sure, like, astronauts aren't going to space every day, but test pilots are probably flying far more often. Yeah. It's also one of those those kind of things where you know how you're you're so much safer in an airplane than you are in your car driving to work or home every day. I know. But you don't realize that. You're like, it's more you're more likely to get hit by a fallen coconut than okay. uh, attacked by a shark. Uh, like really? stuff like that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Oh my god. Uh, the, no, I, I but totally, you get the idea. there's weird shit out there. Yeah. She must be thinking of like movies and all the like things we've talked about in movies, but I'm pretty yeah. sure astronauts actually are overall, it's not too dangerous, but there's also a chance. I think you could be an astronaut and not even go to space. Yes. You're, you're worried. There's so many parts to the job. There's so many. So my fiance is like, a f oh my God, he's so obsessed with space. He's going to like, actually I thought you were about to be like, he's, oh, he's an astronaut. No, and, uh, he wants to be. <laughs> he's such an astronaut and I hate him. Oh no, he wants to be. But there's, there's, um, there's like this point where he almost went into the air force because he wanted to be the first one to go to Mars. And so knowing what I know and this guy's age, he would be working towards the Mars missions. Uh, that would be so cool. So cool. I want to believe, uh, this is a separate conversation. You want to believe this I is I want to believe, I want to <laughs> believe like I will see people go to Mars. Yeah. Like I, I never want to go. I have no, no. desire. No, no. Uh, Keep but, me down here. But I'm good. I would love being like here on Earth, knowing like there are people there. That's yeah. so cool. I want to terraform the fuck out of Mars. Let's do let's it. Let's go. You know, um, style. let's get some Starbucks there. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> am I wrong for not taking the kids with me on my honeymoon when their mom insisted? To start, my ex-wife and I divorced six years ago. She moved on and got married so fast. I couldn't believe it since we were high school sweethearts. We've been sharing custody of our two kids, seven and nine at the time. 
She got busy with her new husband, new house, and I did most of my children's care for two and a half years. Then she got pregnant and counted on me to take care of the kids. I have no problem. In fact, this was a blessing. I got to spend more time with the kids. I got married to my now wife a month ago. My ex asked if I was going to take the kids with me on honeymoon. I said no. I asked if she could have them for a week. She refused. She said she had work, although she's always caused a scene to have them for a week. Her husband said he isn't willing to watch them. Those are his stepchildren. But I see why him and the kids aren't close. My ex threw a fit when I said my in-laws were willing to have the kids. She called me crazy to abandon the kids with strangers they've only known for three years. She started demanding I take them with me. I argued with her, calling her unreasonable, but she called me a horrible, horrible father. She began bad-mouthing me to the kids, asking them if they're comfortable living with their dad's new wife, even told them we're leaving for good. I was fucking livid. My wife assured them none of this is true and explained how every newly married couple get their special time together. I didn't just leave, I gave them special tasks to decide what they wanted their new rooms to look like after renovations. I went over to my ex's place and the argument started. She kept saying I shouldn't put my new wife before my children and abandon them like that. She took notes to talk to her lawyer about my behavior. She called my wife a witch and said she didn't trust her with the kids. I blew up at her and told her to have some respect. Her husband started mocking me, wishing me a terrible time and for the plane to never land then told me to be careful and not come home with the baby. Since I had no problem ditching my kids so easily, I told him the F off and left. My mother-in-law came and picked up the kids. She was excited to do things with them. This was a chance for them to bond. When we came back, my ex and her sister never stopped berating me for not taking the kids, saying the kids are in for a miserable life with my new wife. I told them to stop, but they keep guilting me and saying I acted like a neglectful father, putting my kids last on the list. Was I wrong? You want to know how I realize I'm like dead ass single? There's not even one, like I'm the most single I've ever been. I'm talking no motherfucking roster in this bitch. Like I'm so single. I was out Saturday night. I had a couple of drinks. Normally I'd send like a flirty text message to one of the whores I'm speaking to or anything like that. Not a soul came to my mind. Like not a soul I could even think of to text. Genuinely couldn't fucking pay me to name a name that I'm even somewhat interested in. I have taken like protecting my peace to a whole different level. Like there is no roster. Like fuck the roster. I literally have no roster honestly i think it's like the happiest i've ever been like the most joy i've ever i can read books i don't worry about a single motherfucker i really don't think i worried about them in the past regard fuck this i don't really worry about them in the past regardless but like still no one's irritating me nobody's son is pissing me off you couldn't even pay my ass to get on hinge at this exact moment you couldn't pay me to communicate with one of these weird fucks you really couldn't but i value my peace too much now but i was out saturday and i was like no one i even want to send a fucking flirty text to there's literally nobody what is the biggest lie your partner ever said to you mm. Mm. Cliche, but you can trust me. Okay. Ah. Not a year later, he has someone pregnant. F my life. I hear it, man. That's what they do. Hmm. Right. That's what they do. Pregnant? Boy. Hey! My Wasn't able to meet you at our date spot because I was taken to jail. What? But it was a lie. So he wasn't even in jail? No, because these are all lies. Please, bye. <laughs> First yeah. of all, the fact that you could even use something like that as a lie, lie, that as a lie I believe. Yeah. John just told me he's straight, but I found out he likes. Hmm. And we know what to sing. It's nice to be nice. nice. I told you that his brother died. Ah. He's still alive, by the way. Ah, coming like, what's that guy's name? Legion. Legion. Told me he had cancer oh. and needed money for medication. Eh? So I worked day and night oh. just to find out he spent the money for other girls going on trips and everything. After I found out, he told me that... <laughs> After I found out, he told me it wasn't him. It, it was black magic. And the thing told him to do all of this stuff. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> Am I the asshole for letting my neighbor's yards back up with sewage? I recently moved into a property that backs up to an HOA neighborhood. My yard is adjacent to about four of their properties. I'm not part of the HOA, and the road to my house is a small private road that runs parallel to their private road. So when I first moved in, the county told me that my trash pickup location was on their road. Mine's not a good spot for a trash truck to drive around, and after about two pickups, I found a note on my trash can with the usual HOA BS. 
can't leave me, can't leave my can on their road or whatever. So whatever, I take my can to the end of the road and that works fine. Next, I tried to get a hookup with the gas because the electric heating is really expensive. The nearest gas line runs down their road and the utility is cool with it, but they blocked the construction. Fine, I install a tank and shortly thereafter, I get a note on my door saying that the noise from the installation was disturbing and that the tank is an eyesore. I buried the tank and you can't see even the cap from the HOA properties. That was that for about six months, except a few complaints of me mowing outside of the HOA designated mowing hours, but still within county hours, until a flatbed with a backhoe backs into my driveway. I walk out to see what's going on. Apparently the sewage connection from the HOA runs under my property. Something's clogged and they need to tear up the ground to get to the pipe and take a look. Long story short, apparently the builder had some kind of handshake deal with the previous owner about the sewer line that gave up a few bucks to let them run it through the property. No easement, no deed, nothing in writing, so I send the backhoe guy off. Next, HOA president comes knocking at my door and tells me the sewer is causing backup in several, several of the homes and no one can use their toilets, showers, run their sinks or anything until it's fixed and to rerun the sewer down the road instead of across my property is going to cost millions of dollars and it would take months to fix. I, I said something like, man, that sucks for you guys. Hope you can get it fixed soon. Also, my sign says no trespassing. So if you could keep off my property, I'd appreciate it. Have a nice day. I got a letter from their lawyer with lots of threats, but a bit later, it didn't take much for them to be able to back it up legal legally, but I feel like they could take me to court if they want to. They've had some giant mobile poop tank stuck in someone's backyard for the past three months, and I see no signs of new piping. A few HOA residents have stopped by my house and were basically letting me know that it's unlivable without the pump, and it would and it they can only take five. Today's secret comes from Sarah. Hi guys, I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine. Let's call her Sammy. Back in 2021, I rented an apartment and was letting Sammy live with me rent free as she was having a really hard time. I wanted to help her out. So I said to her, all I really need from you is to occasionally help with the groceries. For context, I was working full time in retail and she was working about two days a week in hospitality. However, this wasn't our long-term play. We both wanted to become actors and were trying really hard to crack into the industry. We bonded a heap over how tough a career path it is, but it got complicated at times. As I'm sure you can imagine, it's really common in the industry to be rejected from roles. Sammy really struggled with rejection and would tend to get jealous pretty easily. For example, if I ever landed a role that she auditioned for, she would ignore me for a few days, then act like nothing at all happened. I figured it was always a bit of a red flag, but I didn't think too much of it at the time. It was around this time that we both auditioned for a role in a new Netflix show. Oh, I get it. Oh. We both got through to the final callbacks, and then I heard nothing. With that in mind, I assumed neither of us got the role. A few weeks later, she told me she got promoted at work and would now be working more. She's lying. <laughs> However, she said she was still worried about paying rent, so I told her we could reevaluate the issue later. Eventually, it got to the point where I was not really getting anywhere with any career path I was on. It wasn't working in retail and the acting thing was getting really hard. I decided to chase another dream of mine and go to Europe. 10 months later, I was there. I continued to pay rent while I was away while Sammy still lived in the apartment. However, halfway through my trip, I got a call from my sister. Uh oh. Uh -oh. She asked me why I did not tell her Sammy was in a new Netflix show. I was floored. I had absolutely no idea Sammy was in the show. 
and it was even weirder because I had been talking to her while I was away and she didn't mention it. Not once. Something did not sit right with me. I decided to scroll through my past call logs and found a call from a casting agency I did not remember taking. As I had accidentally left my phone at home that day. So I called the agency. I'm gonna faint. <laughs> Please don't, we need you on this episode. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I called the agency and spoke to a representative to ask what the call was regarding all those months ago. She's done a school of rock. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is Mr. Schneebly. <laughs> <laughs> no. It turns out they had actually offered me the role no. and that I had declined the job. I can't breathe. Apparently, my profile was removed from the agency as they were told I, quote, no longer wanted to be an actor. After that, I did some more investigating and found that all my headshots and showreels had been deleted from my cloud and all my saved folders. Fuck. What? All my work was gone. Maybe I will faint as well. (laughs) We need both of you. (laughs) Once I found this out, I went to talk to my friend about it, but she was screening my calls. I was halfway across the world and there was nothing else I could do but try to call her. When I returned home three weeks later, all of her stuff was out of my apartment and no one knew how to get in contact with her. (laughs) I like to believe that I worked hard to get where I am. And I like to believe I am a kind person. But I really do not know how to feel about this entire situation, other than feeling like my dreams were ripped out from underneath me. A week ago, I got a message from an unknown number, spoiler, it was her, asking to go and get coffee. Part of me really wants to meet up with her and just ask her why she lied about so many things. But another part of me just wants to politely decline and never talk to her again. You know what Sammy's done? She's dyed her hair. Am I the asshole for telling my grandma my brother makes his own rules? Mm. What kind of rules? Exactly. Rules for life? Mm -hmm. 12? All of them specifically? Uh, So I, 28 female, have a grandma who is pretty judgmental slash critical about things. My brother, Dean, 25 male, is marrying his girlfriend, Sonia, 23 female. In the family, we all fell in love with Sonia from the start, except my grandma, who keeps saying stuff like, well, she seems nice, but you never know what these girls can be hiding. Ooh. Or, they seem in love, but who knows if it's just an act. Real eyes, real lies, true lies. <laughs> yeah, she's just like a Drake fan. Yeah. <laughs> or, she's very pretty, your brother was probably blinded by that, etc. You get it, yeah. <laughs> women hating women, dude, hell yeah, let's fucking... <laughs> Anyway, yesterday my grandma heard from my dad that the couple are having a hard time choosing a venue. She texted me, parentheses, I am the oldest grandchild, so my grandma text, uh, tends to vent to me, saying, you see, trouble in paradise. <laughs> Problems finding a venue is just the first step. Shut the fuck up. Maybe they're problem. not meant for each other. Oh my, what's your problem with this person? She's fucking bored. I yeah, think. just like, straight up, sometimes people are just, just mean because the they're bored. a little bit, yeah. Yeah. This really pissed me off because she she really needs to get off their case. They did nothing to deserve this, so I angrily texted back, What the fuck? Since when does trouble planning a wedding indicate marital troubles? I don't know a single couple whose wedding planning went all smooth sailing. Yeah, I feel like it's a very complicated thing. You have a, they're juggling the needs of so many people. And yeah. Like, yeah, you have to like... Yeah, I feel it's like there's going to be problems. I think it's stressful as shit. It yeah. sounds like it. One of the main reasons I don't want to like do a whole rigmarole with Yeah, it. no, I get it. Planning a wedding is stressful. Grandma, the fact that your brother is so involved in the planning is already a warning sign. What? The bride plans the wedding. Everyone knows that. It's the rule. <laughs> it's the law, dude. The law. <laughs> Bitches got to do all the things in the wedding, all right? Men. Only girls like dresses and oh. decorations Men are and just stuff. there to show up. Yeah. <laughs> Men just get to whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Misogyny. Misogyny, yeah. Classic, classic. Me, Grandma, it's 2024. Couples plan the wedding together as a couple. My brother has an idea of what he wants, and he deserves to take part in the planning of his own wedding, too. Yeah. They make their own rules. Grandma, no, that's the way it is. 
The bride plans of the wedding. The groom grants her wishes to make her happy and doesn't get in- involved. Their bad attitude will ruin their relationship. What bad attitude? They're just working together to plan a wedding. Yeah. Me, they will be absolutely fine, and the only one with bad attitudes ruining relationships now is you. Yeah. Keep acting this way, and they will keep away from you, and then don't come to me complaining that your grandkids stay away from you. My grandma stopped answering and told my dad, and now he says I'm an asshole for being so harsh with her, especially since Dean and Sonia didn't even hear any of this. And we've all done our best for Sonia not to feel my grandma's judgment. Hope it's working. But to be honest, I'm just sick and tired of all her crapping on Sonia for no reason. Yeah. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Should I apologize like my dad said? No. Nah, dog. Fuck that. What? Would I be the asshole if I put a birthday hat on my neighbor's pumpkin? I share a porch with one of my neighbors who is notorious for not cleaning up after herself or her kids. For example, one time there was a broken longboard sitting right in front of their door and they would step over it every day to get into their unit for seven months. They just ignored it until one day I asked the oldest kid to please clean it up. He's a good kid and instantly threw it away. I told him thank you and that was that. Now, I know I could have cleaned it up my, myself, but I don't want to assume that they didn't want it. Maybe it had sentimental value or something. Plus, I constantly sw- sweep up the shared porch, throwing away trash, picking up cigarette butts, sweeping, clearing cobwebs, and in all the time I've known her, she's never swept the porch in the six years that she's lived there. Last year, October 2019, I brought several small pumpkins and placed them on my porch next to my jack-o'-lantern. After Halloween, I threw all of them away in an unused wooded area next to the apartment so they could decompose. The next day, I found one of the sugar pumpkins back on the porch outside of her door. I know that it was one of the ones that I bought because of the particular markings. Okay, weird, but whatever. I'm glad someone's enjoying it. I figured she would throw it away after Thanksgiving, then after Christmas, then after New Year's. Well, it's now been a year and the pumpkin's still there. It's nasty. It looks like it's been practically melted into the porch. And she has put Halloween decorations all around it and still hasn't cleaned it up. I think it's gross, but I left it there on principle because I am tired of cleaning up after a grown woman. We work opposite shifts, so I never see her. I don't have her phone number because she constantly keeps changing it. And I thought of leaving her a note asking her to clean it up, but I'm worried that that will somehow come across as rude. So, I think I might have a little fun with it. I'm considering putting on one of those pointy birthday hats with a sign that says happy first birthday over it since it's been there for over a year. Personally, I think it would be hilarious to get my point across that way, but my husband thinks that we should just suck it up and clean it up. So, would I be the asshole if I celebrated the pumpkin's first birthday? Am I the asshole for making my wife sleep on the couch? Me and my wife have a six-month-old little girl together that still needs formula and milk. I work, and my wife usually takes care of her. Whenever I get days off of work, I'll take care of our daughter so that my wife can get a break. Sometimes she visits friends, or other times she just stays home and relaxes. Three days ago was a day off for me, and for the weeks prior, I told my wife that I was going to take just one day for myself after a long time of no breaks. Come the day of my relaxation, my wife wakes me up to tell me she's leaving to go out with her friends and to take care of my daughter. She left before I could really say much, and I was livid. I obviously can't just ignore our daughter, so I took care of her for the entire day and had multiple times where I was just sitting next to her because I knew something was about to happen, and I'm usually right in those situations. In some of the brief moments of freedom, I called my wife to tell her that she should come home and that I would like to have some form of break on the one day that I asked. Finally, I grabbed a pillow and blanket and threw them on the couch and waited for her to come home. When she did, I told her next time that I had a day off, I'm taking a change of clothes to the car so there is no chance of a repeat of today. I then told her the baby was asleep and that I am getting the bedroom to myself tonight. I went to sleep in the middle of the bed, spread eagle style, so that she wouldn't move in back next to me. The next morning, my wife told me that I was a huge asshole for doing that, and bringing a change of clothes to the car next time wouldn't be necessary. I didn't feel like I did anything wrong here, but maybe I did. So am I the asshole? Edit. Apparently, this needs some clarification. 
She acknowledged and agreed to my day off. I take care of my daughter every morning, evening, and some nights. I do not only pay attention to her on my day off. So am I the F?